this summer to do what I really want to do, which, which is to open a shul over here, where I am. Uh, it's going to be an open shul, and what I mean by that, it's going to be what, what we would call today interdenominational shul.
just don't realize it. It's like the blind man, you know, screaming out, there is no sun, I see no sun. You just can't see it, but it's there. So the spiritual is an integral part of every human being. And the entire purpose of holiness is uh, so that you can slow down and see that spiritual world. That's the purpose of holiness, is to slow you down and you begin to detect the spiritual world. It's not, it's, it's, you're not going to make it a reality, it's there already, it's already a reality. But your senses, your perceptions have been altered by all sorts of things, mainly by not using the, the organs that you have that were placed there for you to be part of spiritual But all those dog food commercials and sitting in front of a TV, it's like, I have not like, that's like the first thing you should do with the TV. I'm not asking that you burn your TV, but just see it as a tool. Don't just plop down when you have nothing to do. TVs, I haven't had a TV in 13 years, but that's another thing. But anyway, Part of my craft is what I do uh, for human beings, but I'm also doing something else in the world. You know what I'm talking about. I'm trying to lift up the consciousness of humanity and produce an enlightenment. That's what I'm working at, and I'm working in the wind, and I got to be careful. I want to tell you what I'm doing, but I got to like really be careful because a lot of people listening in. <coughs> and for them, I'm just another crackpot, and I would like to keep it that way. But I'm doing a lot of things that have to do with uh, praying and seeing the spiritual world, organizing. A lot of things with the politics. Let's just, I don't know, let's just say that that is part of our once we enter the spiritual world, we, we have to become part of the solution to the spiritual world with enlightenment, will enlighten mankind. Originally, in the first New World Order, which was established by Hashem, was based on humanity's freedom. Ever since that, the purpose of trying to enslave mankind has started. This is not nothing new. Today, those who are those New World Order masters, whoever you are, some of my distant family, the problem is that you are not taking solutions. Your solutions do not include the voice of Hashem. Your, your solutions are coming out of humanism. Some of them are well motivated, but that's not good enough. You have to have that inspiration from Hashem. And uh, it reminds me of a friend of mine who was part of my Minyan in San Domingo while I was a doc then, but uh, I'll just hold his name because his father was a very prominent local senator. But I remember he invited me to his house one day when I went there. He was sitting there with a, a woman, Maria, and she got up and left the school. They got there and they said, Who is this? Oh, well, that's my, uh, my soothsayer. That was the woman that read him his horoscope pretty much. And he said, I want you to to interpret a dream for me. She was interpreting it for me. I want you to interpret it. I know you're religious. He said, Listen, I don't believe in that sort of use of the Torah. Interpreting dreams and miracles and all that. I'm not into that. But then he was insistent, you know, he was a small fellow, he was very insistent, and I didn't want to get him interested in spirituality. He says, I had a dream that a powerful man came to my doorstep with a, a bouquet of roses. And that was the dream. And my soothsayer, my real spiritist, which whatever she was, told me that that means that I'm going to be prosperous. And uh, he asked me, what do you think? And to my surprise, I understood exactly what the dream meant. So I said to him, I can tell you what the dream means, and I just want to warn you, you can change the ending of the dream in prayer. And he said, just tell me what the dream is. And I says, uh, well, in a while, you're going to get very bad news at your doorstep. Some bad news about a woman in your life. And he was kind of laughing and stuff. So he let me 
ago, about a week later, a friend of mine came over and knocked on my door. And he said, listen, go over to Tony's house because he's crying a lot. I said, oh my God, what's going on? He said, I don't know, but I dressed up. And I went over there and I spoke to him. And I said, what's going on? He says, I just got to meet that man. I the sister died. Yes, he had only three sisters. The oldest one was the one that he lived most. And it was so difficult for me to speak to him because if you're living a life where spirituality plays no part or a very little part, these tragedies come upon you and then you have no then you're gonna blame God. Listen, if you were in the spiritual world, the advantage is that God can get you prepared for these tragedies. The purpose of the spiritual, the Vedic Hashem, the path of Hashem is so that you will not have to face death and all the things that go along with death. Adam was created and Hathatan created death, but, but, but Hashem created the spiritual world so that through life as you experience the spiritual world, you get prepared to a point where death comes and you don't care because you've already gone past the barrier. You've already gone past the barrier and you're in the spiritual world already. Death is insignificant. So my prayer to you, my, my desire to you, is that you devote more to spirituality and cut, cut away things that take away time from you, like TVs and, 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 and spending time on things that have nothing to do with spirituality. But devote more time to spirituality so that these tragedies, the tragedies that face you every day, uh, and the greatest tragedy of my life was I lost my brother, my brother was Savage accident and da 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 da. Like I don't want to go through it. I'm not going to be great. I'm not sure about it. He prepared his life. 